Thank you so much, TJ. Good morning. We will call this August 4th, 2020 Board of Commissioners meeting to order. Board of Commissioners, before I start today, I would like to call roll to uh, and please respond to verify your presence. Um, District 1, Commissioner Henry Mitchell III. President accounted for. District 2, Commissioner Kelly Robinson. Present. District 3, Commissioner Terenia Carthen. I'm here. And District 4, Commissioner Ann jones guider Okay, so she's not present. Ramona Jackson-Jones, uh, present. Okay, so we have four of our commissioners available today. And I'm assuming Commissioner uh, Guider is out today due to her family emergency. So again, um, I ask that you lift her up and her family up in prayers. Uh, good morning again, Board of Commissioners and to the citizens of Douglas County. Uh, this morning, we have our own Fire Chief uh, Scott Spencer here to render invocation. And after the invocation, I ask that we uh, repeat the, the pledge to the flag uh, in unison. So if we could do that or just uh, chant the uh, the pledge to the flag in unison, I would greatly appreciate that. You have the floor, Chief. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'd like to read uh, just a just a bit of scripture right quick. Uh, this is out of Ecclesiastes. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war, a time of war and a time of peace. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, as you remind us, there is a time for everything. Lord, as we go through uh, the trials and tribulations of, of this world, uh, we just depend on you for guidance, for your love, and for your compassion. Lord, I ask a special blessing on our commissioners today as they make decisions for our county. Uh, they're the leaders of this county, Lord. It's an awesome responsibility. Uh, and we just appreciate what they do. Uh, and we lift them up to you, Lord. For our brothers and sisters that are uh, sick, uh, we just ask that you be with them, give them comfort, give their family comforts. Uh, Lord, we also ask for protection for all of our first responders just bring them home safely to their families at the end of their shifts. Now continue to bless this county, Lord, this state, and this great country of ours. And it's in your son's holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Board of Commissioners, we will start, um, the, we will um, begin to say the Pledge of Allegiance, and I will start off. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Board of Commissioners. And again, uh, thank you so much, uh, Fire Chief Spender, uh, Spencer, for rendering such a wonderful prayer this morning and invocation. Thank you. Board of uh, Clerk, this morning, do we have anyone sign up uh, for public comment? Yes, ma'am. We have two citizens that signed in. Um, and before we start, I will just go over the, um, the instructions for them. Uh, we ask that you mute your phones, or if you are on Teams, please mute your video and mic until the chairman calls your name or the clerk calls your name. Uh, please keep your comments un under three minutes. The clerk will notify you if your time is up and ask you to wrap up comments. Once the public comment is over, if you choose to remain in the meeting, you're welcome to do so but please remember to mute your phones and your video and your mic. Uh, if you wish to leave the virtual meeting, you can continue viewing the meeting meeting on live web stream on, Facebook, on our Facebook page. Um, so we'll start with the first one that I received, which was Ms. Sharon Bachtel. Ms. Bachtel, are you on the line? Yes, I am. 
Okay, you can go uh, ahead and begin. Okay, this is Sharon Bachtel. I live at 6331 South Skyline Drive. And I just had a couple of things to say about the statue. I just wanted to say that I um, agree with moving it to the museum, first of all. The thing I didn't like is there was no town hall for discussion. Um, I didn't even know if I could be able to speak at the meeting about this because I just found out yesterday it was going to be on the agenda. So that was a little disappointing because I think more people would have spoke up if they'd known it was going to be on the agenda. The other thing I was wanting some clarification on is how we're going to pay for the the moving of the statue to the museum. Um, we don't really have much funds right now, and um, I would just like to hear some discussion on um, how you're going to pay for it. And um, I was going to suggest that we have, uh, well, we did have $400,000 in the tourism uh, fund and I think that could be used. Miss Batchel, are you still there? Hello? Okay. Oh, we, yes, I'm here. We lost, I got we cut lost off. you for a minute. Right. Well, that, I was just going to say that we've had to cut things out of our budget. The, um, um, are you still there? Hello? Yes, ma'am. We're still here. We hear okay. you. The, uh, the uh, playgrounds at Bill Arp and um, uh, Fair Play were supposed to get uh, playgrounds there, and um, I don't think that's going to happen. So, I mean, I just want to hear some discussion on where the money's going to come from. And that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Hello. Thank you, Thanks. Ms. Bechtel. I'm sorry. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Thank you for your comments. Okay. Um, Chairman, if it's okay, we'll move on to the next speaker. Yes, okay. please move forward. Lisa. Thank okay. you so much, Ms. Batchel. Mr. Henry Mitchell IV, are you on the line? Yes, I'm on the line. Okay, you can go ahead. Um, yes, um, and just to piggyback off of um, what the uh, young lady spoke about before me. I didn't know that it, what was going to be on the agenda until this morning. I got an email 30 minutes before the meeting saying, hey, this is going to be on the agenda. So if possible, I would like to have the agenda presented to the people at least um, uh, a week before ahead of time, just so we can kind of see if we would like to speak on any of the subjects that you guys will be speaking about on your Tuesday's uh, meetings. Um, also, um, I was hoping to to hear something about the resolution yesterday, but I stayed online to hear anything about it. So hopefully I hear something about the resolution today to see if we can possibly move forward. Um, I, I didn't even know that the statue was going to be moved to the museum, but, you know, maybe I'm uh, I missed that information somewhere. But but that's all I just want to kind of speak on. Just want to hear the resolution. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Henry Mitchell, for we appreciate you. All right, thank you for your contribution. All right, uh, clerk, we have any other citizens who would like to speak or signed up? No, ma'am, that's all that we had. Okay, thank you so much, uh, clerk. Um, Board of Commissioners and Douglas County citizens, I would like to note due to COVID-19 and also due to the community spread of coronavirus, uh, the Board of Commissioners meeting will con continue to be held virtually under the Georgia Opens Meeting Act uh, until now, September 10th, uh, and may be su subject to further extension uh, based on the governor's uh, orders. Uh, I would like to say the Board of Commissioners and also to all our citizens, I ask that we follow the three W's, continue to wash your hands repeatedly. Um, certainly, I recommend highly the Board of Commissioners Commissioners highly recommend you wear a mask, uh, especially when in public areas. And also, last but not least, continue to uh, be very cognizant of your social distancing. With that being said, uh, Board of Commissioners, I'm going to move right into the to the approval of the minutes. Board of Commissioners, you have the Commission Minute meetings of Ju uh, July 20th 
uh, I'm sorry, July 21st, 2020, and the work session minutes of July 20th, 2020, and the exec executive session minutes of July 20th, 2020. Are there any corrections, ad additions, or deletions that need to be made? No, ma'am. Being none, the minutes stand as approved. Board of Commissioners, we're going right into our new business item this morning, which is tab number four, consideration of resolution with exhibits regarding federal, um, the Confederate monument. Um, clerk, I ask that you read the resolution this morning um, and certainly once you read the re resolution, we will certainly move forward with our next steps. Yes, ma'am. Okay, this is a resolution by the Douglas County Board of Commissioners to relocate the Confederate monument on the courthouse lawn and for other purposes. Whereas a Confederate monument is located on the lawn in front of the Douglas County Courthouse and Government Center, and whereas historical documents reflect the, that the monument was erected on the old courthouse square by the Douglasville chapter number 1346 of the Georgia Division of the United Daughters of the Confederacy in 1914. <clears throat> and whereas historical documents further reflect that the chapter funded the construction of the monument and placed it on the courthouse square with the permission of the county governing authority without relinquishing ownership of the monument. And whereas there are no minutes of the county governing authority in which the county formally accepted any donation of the monument. And whereas the chapter asserts exclusive ownership of the monument See attached affidavits of Sybil Willingham, chairperson of the Monument Committee of the Georgia Division of the United Daughters of the Confederacy, and Pam Ward, chapter president. And whereas <clears throat> the Board of Commissioners finds that the monument is exclusively and privately owned by the chapter, and whereas the monument was moved to its present location from its original location in 1998, and whereas the old courthouse building now houses the Douglas County Museum of History and Art, <clears throat> and whereas the old courthouse building is listed on the National Register of Historic Places, see attached certification, and whereas the chapter has expressed its desire that the monument be disassembled and moved to the interior of the old courthouse building to be displayed in the Douglas County Museum of History and Art, at 12431 Veterans Memorial Highway in Douglasville, Georgia, 30134, and whereas the Board of Commissioners finds that the interior of the old courthouse building is an appropriate location for the preservation, protection, and interpretation of the monument, and whereas similar Confederate monuments have recently, recently been vandalized, knocked over, and destroyed by protesters, creating a risk, risk of public injury or death, including Albuquerque, New Mexico, Birmingham, Alabama, Boston, Massachusetts, and Washington, D.C., among other places, and whereas the monument could easily become a flashpoint for violence or vandalism, thus creating a public safety concern for Douglas County and its inhabitants, and whereas the Douglas County Board of Commissioners finds that moving the monument from its current location to the interior of the L Courthouse building is necessary to protect against the risk of injury or death to private citizens as a result of or in the cor course of acts of vandalism or destruction towards the monument and to provide for the preservation, protection, and interpretation of the monument. And whereas the Board of Commissioners finds that this resolution is necessary and proper to promote or protect the safety, health, peace, security, and general, general wel welfare of Douglas County and its inhabitants. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Douglas County Board of Commissioners as follows. Section 1, the county administrator or his designee is authorized and directed to take the necessary steps to move the monument at the county's expense as soon as practical and to place the monument inside the old courthouse building in coordination with the curator of the Douglas County Museum of History and Art. Section 2, the Board of Commissioners hereby declares that the foregoing preamble and whereas provisions set forth here and above constitute and shall be considered to be substantive provisions of this resolution and are hereby incorporated by reference into this provision. Section three, the Board of Commissioners hereby grants the county administrator or his designee the authority to take any and all further actions necessary to carry out the intents and purposes of this resolution. 
Section 4, this resolution shall become effective immediately upon its adoption. Thank you so much, Clerk. We appreciate you. And uh, certainly, Board of Commissioners, I um, will call the question if you don't have any comments before I call the question. Board of Commissioners, you have heard the resolution regarding the consideration of resolution with exhibits regarding the Confederate monument. Do we have a motion to approve? So move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion, Board of Commissioners? No discussion. Okay. Well, I would like to uh, chime in and, and have a discussion. Anyone have a discussion before I move forward? I usually like to cl close out first, Board of Commissioners. No discussion? Okay. With that being said, I would like to say that again, um, um, I would just like to just read something that was actually written by the, the actual daughters that I thought that was really uh, very unique and interesting and certainly was closure for me. And it says, whereas the executive committee recognizes that those Confederate monuments and markers established by the division of chapters of this division were intended to be historical, educational, and to memorize, to, to memorialize the death and sacrifice made by veterans of the Civil War. And whereas the executive committee further recognizes that over time, and in some communities of the state of Georgia, Confederate monuments and markers have become objects of controversy and societal division. And whereas in recent years, the division has received inquiries pertaining to the history, ownership, relocation, altercation, and preservation of Confederate monuments and markers, which may have been purchased and dedicated by the division of a chapter of the division. Whereas in an effort to preserve peaceful, and this is from the Daughters of the United Confederate, um, they are saying, whereas in an effort to provide or preserve peaceful relations among all peoples within the communities where such Confederate monuments and markers exist and to preserve to the greatest extent feasible and practical such monuments and markers. The executive committee desires that the division authorize the monuments committee through its chairperson upon proper request to assist governments of this state with the relocation, alteration and preservation of Confederate monuments and markers determined to be property of the divisions of this chapter. And certainly this was signed, uh, this resolution was signed on July 20th, uh, 2020 uh, by Sharon Steele Smith, who is the president of the Georgia Division of the United Daughter of Confeder uh, Confederacy. So that certainly brings closure. Board of Commissioners, we have uh, Certainly um, a motion on the table and also we have a second. We have a motion and a second. And when I call your name, if there are no other further comments, please respond accordingly or you can start with District 1. District 1, please state Chairman your name. Chairman Jones, I yes. believe that Attorney Bernard is trying to get your attention. Oh, I'm sorry. Attorney I, I, Bernard. I just want to note for the record that the motion includes all the exhibits that are attached there too, just for purposes of the record. Yes. Okay, thank you. So just uh, again, to, re to reiterate citizens, all what I just read and all the exhibits and all the uh, addendums are added along with this uh, resolution. Again, thank you so much for, uh, for that, Attorney Bernard. All right, we have a motion and a second, and please uh, start with District 1 and state your response, and then um, we'll go from there. District 1, Commissioner Henry Mitchell, a uh, yes vote. District 2, Commissioner Kelly Robinson, yes. District 3, Commissioner Tarania Carthen, yes. Ramona Jackson Jones, the Chairman of the Board of Commissioners, yes. We have a five, a four O unanimous vote and the motion carries. Okay, Board of Commissioners, thank you so much. And we will definitely move on. We're gonna move on to tab number five. Uh, all the items on the consent are certainly uh, subject to final release review and now we are now moving on to the consent agenda. I'll start with tab number five, authorization to accept the CARES Act funding from the Atlanta Regional Commission in the reimbursement amount of 
$980.26 to provide materials and hot meals for seniors with immediate needs due to COVID-19 and amend the budget and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number six, authorization to approve a contract with Doron uh, Precision Systems Incorporation for a driving simulator to be used by Connect Douglas and Risk, Sa risk and Safety at a cost of $111 thousand five hundred dollars with the federal transit administration grant paying 80 percent or eighty nine thousand two hundred dollars and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents tab number seven authorization to finalize and distribute a new computer use policy for all douglas county employees as recommended by the technology committee tab number eight authorization to renew an agreement with the comprehensive program services incorporation cps for six months, July 1st, 2020 through December 31st through 2020 to provide enhanced security electronic service for all covered electronic systems as defined in the agreement for Douglas County Sheriff's Office at a total of $84,875 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final legal review. Tab number nine, authorization to amend the elective provisions of the ACCG re uh, Retirement uh, Services Plan Agreement for certain elected and appointed officials as class four employees and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 10, authorization to improve an indemnification and hold harmless agreement in regard to the I-20 uh, landscaping. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes, Madam Chair. Okay. We, we could, Vice Chairman Robinson, just yes. to um, commission. Is, is Director Fred Perry available? Number nine. I'm here, Commissioner. Okay. Can we get into a little bit more detail? What's in there and what's not in there? Can you just address it one more time? For the yes, record? absolutely. So, uh, the uh, agenda is for the uh, amendment of um, the ACCG retirement plan uh, to allow for in-service um, uh, retirement benefits for class four employees. Uh, this would allow for uh, those selective individuals in the class four category to begin to receive their retirement benefit at the normal retirement age of 65. Um, again, the uh, currently the class four uh, employees consist of uh, the board of commissioners, the coroner, the magistrate, the sheriff, the tax commissioner, the clerk of superior court, chief magistrate, the probate court judge, state court judge, juvenile court judge, superior court judge, solicitor, and district attorney. Um, currently, I have a request in with Paul Bates from GEPCOR to uh, make also an amendment to uh, our master plan document to take the Board of Commissioners out of the class four category and establish another category for the Board of Commissioners separately so that this amendment would not apply. Unless uh, following a, uh, a public hearing that uh, upon uh, you know feedback from the public, you as a board decide to have this uh, this amendment applicable to the Board of Commissioners, we will move forward with that. So um, that's what, in a nutshell, what it covers. Uh, and uh, Commissioner Robinson, if you have any questions, I'd be, uh, be glad to answer. Yeah, I just wanna make sure. So the motion or the agenda item has the Board of Commissioners in it. So yes, I guess sir. if the motion goes forth, we're eliminating the Board of Commissioners, is that accurate? Uh, yeah, if we approve it as is. That means the board of commissioner gets it, and that's not the intent. That's not the spirit. It has yes, to go to a public hearing. Yes, that's that's correct. We well the the as it stands right now, commissioner, you are correct. The board of commissioners would uh, be a part of this amendment uh, as it stands right now. Uh, but um, um, my thought is is that we were going to. Uh, simultaneously as requested have the Board of Commissioners taken out of the class four uh, category and establish a category for you all, a freestanding category for the Board of Commissioners alone. Okay. Um, Madam Chair, at your pleasure, I'd like to make a motion to remove the Board of Commissioners and establish um, um, category classification five 
for the Board of Commissioners would be considered at a future date as, as you determine. And I second that too, though, because I thought that's what it was. Me too. I did as well. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please indicate by, by stating your name. We'll start with District 1 to remove the Board of Commissioners from this uh, uh, from this particular item now, and then we will certainly discuss at a later date for the Board of Commissioners. They will be, you said, placed in a whole different class, correct? Yes, Madam Chair. And okay. uh, we were going to move forward with that. <clears throat> so, um, uh, yeah, we, we were going to move forward with that. I have Paul Bates working on that uh, amendment as well. Okay. So uh, that is already in the process. Okay, thank you. We have a motion and a second. Please start with your name, Board of Commissioners, uh, District 1. Yes. Commissioner Mitchell, District 1, that will be a yes vote. Kelly Robinson, District 2, yes. Terania Carthen, District 3, yes. <laughs> Ramona Jackson Jones, Chairman of the Board of Commissioners, yes. We have a 4 0 unanimous vote, and the motion carries. So we'll move on back to, we had a uh, motion on the floor. Okay. We're in the discussion mode, Madam Chair. Yeah, we are discussion. That's what I'm saying. Commissioner uh, Robson, are you finished? Yes, Madam Chair, you're the floor. Okay, you're you. back. Okay, I just yes, want to make sure you yield back. All right, so we will, uh, Board of Commissioners, any other questions? Okay, we we have a motion and a second. We have a motion and a second. Please indicate your response. We'll start with District 1 for the approval of the consent agenda. That will be a yes vote from Commissioner Mitchell, District 1. Kelly Robinson, District 2, yes. Serenia Carthen, District 3, yes. Mr. <laughs> Jackson Jones, the Chairman of the Board of Commissioners, yes. We have a 4-0 unanimous vote and the consent agenda passes. Thank you all so much, Board of Commissioners. Uh, Board of Commissioners, do you have any announcements today um, before I call on our Director of Communication to provide us with the litany of uh, um, announcements for today? Do you have one, any announcements, uh, Board of Commissioners? Okay. Commissioner Mitchell does have an announcement. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll give it and toss it over to you. So, but yes, we've got Commissioner Carson, myself, and Commissioner Robinson. Uh, this upcoming Saturday, we've got a book bag drive, and and the book bags and supplies and all those great goodies are all coming in, and we've got a ton of them. And thanks to all of the great sponsors, to include Black Diamond and uh, Fit for the Future and others who actually had a, a huge contribution. There. Uh, to this entire book bag drive and school supplies for our, our young folk. But with that, uh, I know I would like to, I don't know all the other sponsors, like I know Commissioner Vice Chair Robinson has a, a couple of sponsors to include uh, Commissioner Carthen, but this is going to be a really a, a huge thing and, and it's open to the general public. Come by, we're going to have COVID-19 uh, testing and a whole lot of other things going. Now, keep in mind, you'll drive through and you'll Get your book bags and then you'll go through if you would like to get a COVID test uh and i think commissioner carlton could probably better explain kind of how that layout would go but again it's going to be really huge it's going to be a lot of supplies all while supplies last and it's open to the general public and i'll kind of toss this over to commissioner carlton and, and add to this whole book bag drive that we're doing this upcoming saturday yes mm -hmm. thank you uh commissioner mitchell one of the things that I think is really key in making sure that our students go back to school, whether in person or virtual, is that they do have the supplies that they need and we help out citizens as much as possible. But we also have the COVID testing. And this testing is not only for adults, but it's also for kids. So if you want your kid tested or if you want to be tested, please log on to um, the Douglas County Happenings Facebook page. We do have the flyer and uh, the information for you to get registered and to register your child to get tested. Again, this is drive-through testing, um, and you can drive through or walk up to pick up your uh, supplies for your student. Um, we will have um, some goodies on hand. We will have PPE equipment um, to give out um, for those who are in need of it. So again, this is this is book bags, this is testing, and this is PPE equipment. This is all of us coming together to ensure that our citizens have what they need and especially our kids as they go back to school. We wanna support them. We want them to have a great 2021 school year and we want to let them know that um, we believe in their success when it comes to education, even during this pandemic. Thank you. 
And to add, though, Commissioner Carson, I, I, I guess we didn't say the location, but we'd be at the courthouse. So that'll be the roundabout where you kind of drive through, keep going, and all that kind of good stuff, correct? Am I, am I correct in that statement? You are absolutely right. It will be at the courthouse, 8700 Hospital Drive from 10 a.m. to 12 noon um, while supplies last. Yes. And you must get registered for testing. Yes, yes. And uh, I guess I'll also go to my vice chair, Commissioner uh, Robinson, to add any other additions, because I know you had a great sponsor to jump in and be a part of this. So I don't know, Commissioner Robinson, that you want to have that anything you want to add before we close out on this big, huge book bag drive? Uh, ditto, ditto. You guys did a great job. And it's an <laughs> absolute honor to serve alongside of you guys. No. Just come on out to all citizens. Um, just come on out. Um, it's going to be a blessing. I mean, it, it's something else to make decisions, but it's another to actually serve the community and, and, and meet real needs. And so it, it's absolutely an honor to serve this coming Saturday, which is August 8th. And I look forward to being there with all my peers. Come on out. I yield the floor. Thank you. Thank you. And outside of that, Madam Chair, I think that's all we've got. Just come and be a part of this. And while supplies last, you can pick up as many school supplies that I think you and your family would possibly need. And there'll be, like I'm saying, pencils, pens, book bags, paper, you name it. Because uh, I was in my office the other day, and my office is just overrun with supplies. <laughs> supplies. <laughs> so thanks. But uh, outside of that, though, and, and, a, and a huge thank you to Brandon and, and Henry, my son, and others who've actually been leading the charge. Uh, on this book bag drive and all that good stuff. So again, thank you. And outside of that, we'll see you guys this uh, Saturday and uh, I think 10 o'clock if I'm not mistaken. And we'll kind of make have some fun and, and enjoy the moment. But one last thing, while supplies last. All right, I yield the floor. <laughs> thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell and also Commissioner Carthen and Commissioner uh, Robinson. Certainly this is a great event and it will benefit our uh, citizens and also our students that are returning back to school. And also thank you so much for the PPE component because we definitely need our citizens to uh, wear masks. And I know we have over 20,000, but they're probably the, that amount is dwindling down right now because we have been actually distributing masks. But thank you all so much. And this is a wonderful event. And I will drop by too. I don't have any more children in school, but I may um, just get a mask or something. But now I want to be there just to say hello to the citizens. All right, I want to move on to our director of communications to see what he has to add to the um, to our announcements today. Director uh, Rick Martin, you have the floor. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, Madam Chair, uh, commissioners, uh, staff, members of the public. Uh, following up on uh, Commissioner Carthen, and Commissioner Mitchell, and Vice Chairman Robinson's uh, announcement on the back to school event uh, happening this Saturday. We have some additional uh, announcements to make. I want to remind the public that the Douglas County Board of Commissioners will be holding a special called meeting to discuss CARES Act funding regarding COVID 19. Uh, that's happening this Thursday, beginning at 10 a.m. The meeting will be held virtually and broadcasted on DCTV 23 and available live web stream on DCTV 23 Facebook's page and Douglas County Happenings Facebook as well is where you could connect. Uh, new news, the Communications and Community Relations Department has decided to produce four virtual September Saturdays show celebrations. Uh, this was made through the programming committee, the decision through the program, programming committee uh, part of, led by, I should say, Commissioner Mitchell and Commissioner Carthen. Thank you uh, very much. The celebrations will be happening in a virtual way of taped shows that are happening each Saturday for the month of September. So each will have a theme. Each celebration will have a theme, a specific theme that will consist of multiple interviews, music performances, and special guests. We'll have more details to come, and please want to encourage you to join us on DCTV 23. Uh, the events will be hosted by Commissioner Mitchell and our Lena Hardy, our communications and video specialist, Lena Hardy. More information and new news to announce as well. The Douglas County government website, www.celebratedouglascounty.com, will be getting a new look in September. The Board of Commissioners approved funding for the redesign last year of the county's new website. 
please be on the lookout for more information to come and the specific date of the launch. And I also want to try to share something um, that is pretty cool to let people know how they can monitor. And let me know if you can see the website. Do you see the running clock of the website? Commissioners? Yes, we Manager? do. Yes. Super. Well, this is something created by our, our very own TJ Jaglinski. I'm really proud of it. Um, it's the running clock for the launch of the brand new website that will be shared with the public. So I want to just thank you. That concludes today's announcements. And also, you can see the flyer on the right side on our website uh, of the Back to School event that uh, Commissioner Mitchell, Commissioner Robinson, and Commissioner Carthen mentioned a short time ago. I want to thank you all. Madam Chair, that concludes this morning's announcement. Announcements as I prepare to stop sharing <laughs> and um, get back to uh, you. So, so thank you so much. Uh, okay. That concludes the announcements. Thank you so much, uh, Director Martin. All right, Board of Commissioners and to the citizens of Douglas County, as we continue to um, cope with the COVID-19 and the challenges associated with this uh, virus, unprecedented virus, I just wanted to provide some uh, data uh, that I always uh, provide at the end of our uh, meetings each, uh, every two weeks, or should I say bi-weekly. Uh, right now, there are 195,435 confirmed cases of COVID in uh, the state of Georgia. Right now, we have 3,842 deaths. Uh, hospitalizations, we have 19, we've had 19,124. And ICU admissions, which is intensive care, uh, which is uh, 3,512 admissions. And uh, Douglas County, as I speak specifically about Douglas County, we've had 2,331 confirmed COVID uh, cases and uh, sadly 49 of our citizens have died and my uh, and the board of commissioners deepest condolences go out to the families um certainly i continue to encourage you to please uh, monitor your hand washing uh your social distancing and also please wear a mask it's, you know it's recommended but it's highly recommended uh, that you do so in public areas to protect your respiratory system. Certainly, uh, we talked about this is certainly a marathon and not a sprint, and it is proven as we are now into the fourth month and moving now uh, headed toward the fifth month of this virus with no vaccine uh, on the horizon at this particular time. But I just want to remind our citizens, once a vaccine is finally developed and released, it sometimes takes couple of years before you're able to saturate 300 million citizens. There's a lot of citizens in the United States. So I want us to continue to make sure we follow the things that we have at hand right now, such as our three W's, because we, if we don't do that, I, I've said so eloquently last, the last couple of meetings that we've had or the sessions that we've had uh, opportunity to just talk about this uh, disease, or should I say this virus, that uh, if we take this virus lightly, this virus will take us. So uh, the campaign is still in full force. We have an educational campaign in full force. Uh, you are, will be, begin to see signs throughout the county, and I've had citizens call and say you see some signage. Also, billboards are going up. As we speak, the city is going to place 12 billboards up in yard signs as well to help along with this campaign. We have a commercial that's running on 46 channels, and then also we have flyers coming out. There have been some questions from the citizens regarding uh, who is paying for this. The, the Federal Government CARES Act is asking me from the United States Congress to help get the information out as we try to uh, deal with the challenges of this uh, virus, this unprecedented virus. With this, this is the most, um, I said, critical virus that we've had in uh, modern history. So please remember all the things that you're seeing are being funded by the CARES Act, uh, and it certainly is reimbursable expenses. So Board of Commissioners, what, what, with that being said, we will re, re, um, recess until 6 p.m. tonight for our joint planning and zoning uh, and BOC meeting. And I look forward to you returning at 6 o'clock. At this time, we will go into recess. Thank you, Board of Commissioners and uh, the citizens of Douglas County, and we will see you at 6 p.m. tonight.
thank you.